Hi, and welcome to the basement. I thought today we'd take a look at the Commodore that nobody knows anything about. So back in the 80s, Commodore really wanted to diversify into the business market. They had conquered the home market. Their Commodore 64 and VIC-20 were very, very popular. Now Commodore was actually called Commodore Business Machines. So you can see they really wanted to take the fight to IBM and they really wanted to get a slice of that business pie. Starting in the mid 80s, they released a series of PCs. Now what I've got here is a PC5 and that's a full size XT clone. Uh, it has a standard monochrome text card and 512K of RAM. It's got five ISA slots in it, so it is expandable like any good XT machine should be. No mouse or anything, just a keyboard and uh, the lovely little green screen monitor. Now I grew up with a Commodore 64, I'd love to get my hands on another one. Um, they are getting pretty hard to find and the ones you can find are very expensive. But I was able to get my hands on this and so while it's not a 64, we're going to have a look at it, see what we can do with it and see if we can get some sort of hard drive controller put into this because this is the base model PC5, has one floppy drive there but the machine's in lovely condition. So it's going to be fun to explore it and have a poke around inside and see really what it's made of. Let's go. So first of all, we'll fire it up and just test that it's working. Okay, it's booted up fine. So uh, let's enter our new date and our time. And here we are, an MS-DOS 3.2. So before we pull it apart, let's just have a look around the machine. Here on the front, you can see the nameplate Commodore PC5. And what's quite cool is underneath is that's where the keyboard plugs in. So it saves you having to run the cable all the way around the back. So this is the other side of the machine and you can see a little Commodore logo here. We've got our five and a quarter floppy drive with of course our DOS disk in here, MS-DOS 3.2. This actually looks like it came with a PC-10 um, and excuse the green masking tape, the label was falling off and I didn't want to lose it so I've stuck it on with whatever tape I could grab hold of at the time. Okay, let's have a look at the back of the machine. Here of course we've got our kettle cord input and our power switch, nice chunky switch. Um, no soft power here, just operates directly on the power supply. We've got an RS-232C port, I've no idea what that is or what it's for. We've got a Centronics port, again I don't know what that is or what it's for, Google it. Over here we've got our video out port which is a monochrome text only, uh, I think it's called an MDA, um, monochrome display adapter, uh, certainly can't produce graphics but it does produce a lovely crisp image on our little green screen. So let's um, pull the case off and have a look what's inside. Okay the case is just held on with five screws so it's easy enough to whip them off and we'll take them off and have a look inside. So just hiding under here we have another screw on each side so we'll take them out as well. I wonder when the last time anyone looked in here was. Probably a long time ago. So this here is our MDA display adapter. It says on there 1985 Commodore Monochrome PCB assembly made in Taiwan. And you can see also I've got our other slots on here and uh, so we can have up to five different cards in here. So this card's interesting. Um, it's got a bunch of chips on it here and it's also got some sockets and it says down here RAM extension. So uh, I assume that it's some sort of extended RAM and we can extend it further by adding more RAM chips into these sockets. Something that maybe we can look at doing. If you look down here on the motherboard itself, we've got all these lovely chips. Now of course if you wanted to make your own printed circuit board, there's only one place to go and that of course is PCBWay. PCBWay is really your one-stop shop for any kind of electronic project that you have planned. You can pick from one of the designs from the library, there's heaps to choose from, a lot of very talented people upload their designs so you can just download it and build stuff. Right now they're having a design competition so get involved with that if you would like to win some great prizes, submit your ideas, you can have a lot of fun and perhaps win something too. So get on down to PCBWay really is the place to go for your next PCB project. And they're also the kind sponsor of today's video.
So we've got some chips here. We've got our BIOS chip, BIOS 2.03. There's something here with the label that's been peeled off. Not sure what that was. So here we have the NEC copy of the Intel 8088 processor. And this is the heart of the machine. This is its brain. And we have an empty slot next door, which would have been for the 8087 floating point unit uh, math coprocessor there. So a nicely laid out, very clean circuit board. Um, minimum amount of dust on here. I can't find a battery anywhere that needs replacing, not to say there isn't one, we haven't seen under here yet, um, but so far there's no sign of any corrosion or any major damage, which actually is a big thumbs up for me, makes me very happy. So this is our power supply, it's got the built-in fan, uh, and moving over here of course we've got our floppy drive, and that seems to be working fine, not going to touch anything there. Underneath we've got space for either another floppy or we can put a hard drive in there. And if we look over here, we have, of course, a great big empty spot, which uh, already has a power cable handily sitting there for a hard drive and a hard drive activity light uh, that would plug into the hard drive as well so that we can see the flashing light on the front of the case. And of course, here we have the PC speaker and that's all the sound we get on this machine. It's a very solid machine. Um, it's very well built. The case is very strong. There's plenty of room everywhere. Um, there's, there's, everything's laid out nicely. It's uh, yeah, it just feels like a quality machine, even though it's like the base model. It would have been the cheapest one you could get. It does feel like it can last the distance, and sure enough, it's still working fine today. I'll give it a bit of a brush down. There's a few little bits of dust here and there, but because it doesn't have much of a fan in it, it wouldn't have sucked in a lot of dust over its life. And then once I've given it a bit of a clean, we'll have a look at the upgrade I've got for it today. Ah, look at this. Woodikers, pear and manuka honey. Um, so when I was ordering this from Monotech PC, he said, uh, it sounds like you're from uh, New Zealand. And I said, yeah, I am from New Zealand. I used to live in Nelson. He said, I'll throw something in with the order. And look what he's included. It's uh, some Whitaker's chocolate, Nelson pear and Manuka honey. And he doesn't know this, but Whitaker's chocolate is my absolute favorite. It's only made in New Zealand and it is seriously the best chocolate you'll ever get your hands on. So man, thanks very much, Monotech PC. That is an awesome gift. Uh, and I'm gonna enjoy eating that, thank you very much. But let's have a look at the thing that I ordered. And as you can see, it's a XT to IDE Deluxe. Now, when I was looking at a solution for the Commodore PC5, I didn't really know where to start. I reached out to JD at Monotech and just said, hey, can you help? I, uh, I see you're selling a range of products what should I be using for my old machine? And he said, this is the one you definitely should be using. Um, it's the XDIDE Deluxe, which means it takes a compact flash card, which uh, sits in the back of the machine, easy to access it's in the slot there. And it also can take an IDE hard drive there as well. And I'm hoping that we can just connect this in, uh, throw in a compact flash card, and <laughs> fingers crossed, it just works because uh, Otherwise, we've got to be changing BIOS and stuff, but anyway, we'll find out. So if you're looking for a compact flash solution to your XT machine or sound card or other sort of XT type cards, I really recommend you check out Monotech PCs. Uh, he'll see you right. Okay, before we continue, let's get to the important stuff. Let's have a piece of chocolate. Mm -mm. What I love about these is that they're generous squares. So you can get a nice, decent chunk. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good chocolate. Turn a piece? Well, you can't have any. All mine. Okay, I'll clean the chocolate from my hands. And we'll continue. Sorry, still eating chocolate. Right, so we're going to put the card into one of these slots. I'm not sure if it matters what slot it's in, but I'll put it in this furthest one. So it'll just sit into the slot nicely. And we'll push it home goes and there we have it too easy right we'll throw in a compact flash card turn the computer on and see what happens okay I've got this one gigabyte compact flash card I'll throw that in and let's turn the machine on 
Now after it's done its memory test, you can see we've got some new BIOS options at the top here. And it sees the card and it's trying to boot from C drive. Okay, I've left it a while, nothing seems to be happening. It's still stuck on this booting C from C. So I'll turn it off and we'll try again and I'll hit A to get the floppy drive up. Okay, RAM test, we'll hit A and then we'll boot from floppy drive. Great, so we've booted into version 3.2 of DOS. Let's have a look if we can go to our C drive, we can. We'll hit directory, not reading. So let's abort and go back to A. And if we hit type in F disk, so let's create a DOS partition. And the maximum size, um, if the total disk space is 991 cylinders and it's a gigabyte card, that means these roughly equate to a megabyte per cylinder. So if we make our partition size 30 cylinders, we'll start it at 193. DOS partition cre created. So let's have a look now at our partition data. Great, so we've got our DOS partition, partition number two, and it's size 30. So let's return to DOS, and our system's gonna restart. Let's let it do that. Now let's try formatting C drive. Format failure. Now I keep getting this format failure whenever I try and format the card. I've tried different sizes of partitions and I keep getting that same failure. Now what I suspect it might be is that the first sort of um, chunk of data on that card has been reserved by another partition and so it might be that DOS doesn't really know what to do with it and so I'm struggling to get this card to work. Now what I was trying to do is format this card and then I was going to copy DOS 3.2 from our floppy disk over to the hard drive and have like a DOS 3.2 install on this machine. But I do have another option which we're going to try now. So what I have here is a 64 megabyte compact flash card. This card contains an image of DOS 6.22 and it's like an install image as it would appear on a hard drive. So I'm hoping when we turn the machine on, it sees it as a hard drive. So once we're through our memory check, I won't hit A, I'll let it stay um, trying to boot from C drive. And we can see it's seen a flash card and it's booting. So we're starting MS-DOS. Great, and there we have it. We are running Let's have a look at our version, MS-DOS 6.22. So we can have a look at our check disk and we can see that the volume is called DOS, it's 63 megabytes, and the computer thinks it's a hard drive. So that XT IDE Deluxe card we've got is working perfectly. Um, it just takes a little mucking around with the compact flash cards, getting the right ones. I might try a few different cards as well to see if I can do a 3.22 install, I might do that later. But for now, let's have a look and see if we can get some games working on this machine. Okay, we've got Magic Duck. Let's play that. Uh, no compatible adapter detected. Press Y to start the game. Let's try it anyway. Display adapter not compatible. Okay, we've got um, Lemmings. Let's try playing Lemmings. And I cannot find a display adapter that Lemmings can use. Lemmings will only run with one of the above adapters. So the minimum spec is CGA. We've of course got MDA and that's not gonna work. Okay, got one more game to try and this program does not work on a monochrome display adapter. So there you have it, a look around our Commodore PC5. Now I'll be the first to admit, it's a pretty limited machine, it's never going to win any performance contests, um, it's slow, it's old, it's got a very limited display and that's stopping us from being able to play some games and have some fun on it, but it was designed as a productivity machine, it's designed to go in offices and to do word processing and printing and and those sort of general office -y type tasks. But for a gaming machine, of course, it's never gonna work, it's never gonna get there. Now we've upgraded it, we've put in that XT to IDE Deluxe card from Monotech and it's working great and it makes this machine actually very versatile. I can pop out that CF card, put it in my normal machine, put software on and off it, and uh, we can try a range of different software on this machine. So if you have any ideas of software we should try next on this machine, just write it down in the comments below and I'll source it and chuck it on here and we'll see if it runs. But for now, there's not much more for me to say other than you've been in the basement. Have a great day.